In today's tutorial, let's work on a vest, and this is for two-year-old toddler boys all the way to men's five extra large. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this v-neck vest. It comes in many, many, many sizes. We are starting with the boys toddler size all the way to ages of 10. And then this pattern here, which is the adult version, starts in the very next size, which is extra small all the way to five extra large. In construction and the way that this is done is absolutely identical to each other. I'm going to be teaching the extra small version in the adult size in today's tutorial but all you have to do is just substitute the information. How do you substitute? That's next. So Yarnspirations does a great job in being able to help us substitute information and you're gonna notice that you're gonna see sizes and you'll notice that there's colors associated to each of these sizes. It's in both of these patterns here. So when we have information on the pattern that is relevant to having to make a decision then you're gonna notice that is gonna appear here. So you're gonna notice it says fit chest and you see the colors are matching. So exactly what you see here okay is matching to this chest size and to the finished chest here and you will see it matches over here. But what exactly does it mean? Let me show you. So here's a closer look. Whenever a decision needs to be made or something needs to be following a specific pattern that is matching a certain size. So this is the child size that we're looking at right now. So this is two, four, six, eight, and ten. So the first number is the smallest size the next number is the next size and so on. So whenever you have to make a decision then this will show. So if there is no decision to be made when it gives you a set of instructions it's the same for all sizes. So right at this point it says chain eight which will give you then the two year old size and then if you were doing the next one it would be four and then six, eight, and ten. So you see that they're slightly different from each other. So whenever you're doing these kind of patterns it actually just look for those numbers and what I like to do for myself when I go to do something like this is that I grab a highlighter and I highlight the number that I want because sometimes it's easy to get lost in a pattern. Now in both patterns there is five different sizes. So this is still looking at the child size here. So whenever you see that there's brackets like this with the numbers that indicates the same information that I was just sharing. So the first number is two, four, six, eight, and ten. And so if you separated that out from this pattern this pattern would not be so long because essentially there's taking up a lot more room in the space. So let's just say um, we're skipping the first four that's for the t uh, two year old and then so on and so on. Do you see that? So when you have to follow these instructions you just have to look for that. So for example in the second row here there is no bracket information so that means that all of them are exactly the same uh, in this particular row and this row and then it says repeat the last two rows and you see it appears here again. So the uh, two year old size would be repeat only once and the next sizes would repeat uh, two times. So just look for that. It just makes it a lot more sense. So let's move over to the adult size version because that's what I'm going to be doing on camera today. So here I'm looking at the adult size version and both of the versions have the shape of the vest here in a diagram format. Now it has the information that you have and there's a lot of information here but remember what I said is that whenever you see a group here like this, so let me just circle it like this, this is all a set of instructions that relay from this point to this point in the size. So in extra small this will be eight inches tall and then uh, the next size up will be that and so on and so on. So you'll see it along the bottom as well. So for the extra small it will be 18 inches across the next sizes and etc. So this uh, gives you a really good indication on what you need to do. So the construction is very uh, similar to what we have to do even in the child size and I'm gonna give you some tips in order to speed yourself up in this particular project as well. So for myself the front and the back are very similar up until you get to this line here. So we're gonna start both of the, the ribs here okay and this is part of this. So it's just a one unit. So you can do the front and the back at the same up until this point and then you can deviate. Now you'll see that the back still comes in like this but it's solid along the back all the way to the top and then in the front it is uh, similar to this but then it starts to branch off to give you the v-neck shape. So it's a really quite an easy thing to do. So for myself what I did is that I did the rib first like this and you need multiple balls of yarn anyway. This is what my train of thought was and so I, I did the rib all the way across. 
the next part joins onto that rib then working up. So I did both ribs at the same time using two different yarn balls so that I didn't have to fasten off. I then did the front and the back all the way to this point here and then I'm going to then take you further. So when I give you a set of instructions this is what you can do and you can get both at the same time and I will show that to you in just a moment. So as I just mentioned what I did is that I did the rib and so the rib is going back and forth all the way to the end and I got it to my inches that I needed and I believe it was 18 inches that I needed to go. And then what I did is that I put this aside and I have the yarn and I just put it aside and I grabbed up the next one, uh, next yarn ball and I did the next rib for this one. So I had both ribs actually done and then I moved up. So what I've got now is that I've got two different yarn balls on the go at this time. One is going to each one of the panels and so it just makes it easier for me to remember the pattern and a lot more simpler. And what I wanted to do is that the dimension to get to the top of where the armhole starts is the same on both panels. So I did one panel all the way to the top and then I put it aside and then I did the next one all the way to the top. And so I wanted to make sure that I both, I finished off on the same side and when I overlaid them they are the exact same size just like that. So I've also marked on here the front side of the project which I will get to in today's tutorial as well and uh, it's really not a hard pattern in order to follow and at the end all I'm just gonna do is sew up through the side anyway. So what I'm gonna do is and I'm gonna get you started to show you how to do the ribs uh, area here and then I'm gonna show you how to do this stitch here and then I'm gonna leave it for you to get yourself up here where we're gonna start doing the armholes and what we're going to do then is just show you how to read that on the pattern which is coming up next. So I realized by reading ahead that I could see that there is a repeat going on in this side. So we start off with the back panel and it says chain 10 and we do the ribbing and etc. And then I got myself all the way to where I needed to go. So I did the first extra small so I went to 18 inches. So if you have other sizes you have to go to these dimensions here. And then it says do not turn at the end and then work 59 single crochets across the top edge and then of course it has different uh, measurements for or different single crochets for the other sizes. And then it says proceed as follows. So I did both of the ribbings at the same time and then I finished off and then I moved on here. So it says here in the front over here it says repeat from double asterisk to double asterisk. So I looked for the double asterisk over here and over here and I realized that the front is actually only from here to here. So right now both of the panels that I have currently that I just showed you are ending right here. Because what I'm gonna do is that both of them still have to have um, the starting shape of the armholes and then from here one takes a detour. So right here if you're doing the back you're just gonna continue along here like this okay and then continue to shape the shoulders then here and then once you get to this point here for the front is that you'll jump over here and then you'll start working down this particular column here. So it just, it's just an easier way to look at it from this perspective and so I like to make it a lot easier for myself instead of doing one whole complete panel I like to work like an assembly line so I don't have to read the instructions as much. So let me get you started on doing the ribbing first. So using a five millimeter size H hook and I'm using Karen Simply Soft today I'm going to be starting the ribbing. Now it doesn't matter which size that you're working on the ribbing just look at the particular pattern and all of them in the adult size start with chaining of 10. In the child size it starts with chaining of 8. I'm gonna have you look at those instructions and substitute that information going forward. So just to start off with the slip knot and I'm doing the extra small in adults and it says to chain 10. So I'm just gonna chain so one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And if you're thinking wow that's a really large a ribbing it's gonna compress so don't worry about that. So go in second chain from the hook so count back so one and two and come in second chain going into the back hump only. I want you to single crochet yourself back across your chain. You'll notice that I'm not counting. I don't need to. I can see my stitches but if you went second chain from the hook and you originally started off with chain 10 you end up with nine single crochets in the end and that will be the magic number then going forward for the rest of the ribbing going all the way across. So what we're gonna do is that it causes a ribbing effect to happen and that's gonna be caused in the next row which is gonna be continuously repeated then until you get to the set dimensions 
for it. So in the extra small I had to go a total of 18 inches. It did not take me long to do it in 18 inches in this. So what I'd like to do is that I'd like to go in the next row. So you're gonna repeat this next row over and over and over until you get to your dimension. So usually what we do is that we turn and go like this. But it's harder to see that back loop only. We're only gonna go into back loops. So in to get it started what I like to do is just look at it from this perspective. It, I'm sitting right here behind you. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna chain up one and I'm gonna dive into the back loop only of the stitch. So if you're new to crochet there's two loops together they say a stitch. If you go in the front loop okay that's the front and if you go in the back one it's the back loop. So going into the back loop only single crochet across. Once I get the first one in the rest are easy to see. It's just that first one's kinda tough to see right off the bat so I don't turn it all the way around until I get to the second stitch. And so you're just gonna work back and forth doing back loop single crochets all the way all the way until you get to the dimensions that you have. So I'm just gonna review how to turn again and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you. I'm gonna do a smaller swatch sample in order to show you the next stitch above because I've already done it. And don't forget you have to go into that final stitch and if you're ever confused you should have nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So if you thought there might have been one more you could have you might accidentally put an extra. So to turn your work again so just chain up one and dive into that back loop only then you can start turning it in order to work your way down. So please continue that to the assigned dimension that is in the pattern and I will meet you back here. I just have to go a few more inches in order to show you the next step in order to uh, do this stitch work all the way to the top of the vest and then we're gonna pick up the vest from that point and then move on in today's pattern. So for myself I'm gonna stop here because I can show you what the next part of the pattern looks like just for this small swatch. So you'll have it complete to a tire band. You're not gonna fasten off and what I would recommend is doing both of these at the same time yeah, because they both have to be the same dimension before moving on to the next part of this project. Let me bring my sample and show you what's next. So once you get your entire band done the next part of the panel is directly right attached to this and we're, what we're gonna do is that when we're done this uh, particular one is that we're just going to start our single crochets along the top and we have to get so many dimensions of sorry so many single crochets across the top and that's indicated on the pattern. In my case extra small there's 59 stitches all the way across the top. Do you see how it's kind of buckling like this? This is that str uh, stretch of this to allow it to shape to your body when you're wearing it properly. So this is a kind of a neat idea. So what I need you to do is get both of these ribs done and now I'm gonna show you what to do then to start this and then I'm gonna show you the two rows that exist all the way then to the bottom of the armholes. So once your ribbing band is all the way done and you got it to the dimension when you go to lay it down don't overstretch it like this to cause it to um, be uh, malformed but you don't have it buckling like this. Just have it nicely just kind of laying out and grabbing your tape measure and just uh, measure it. So what you have to do then to move along the top then to the next section of this is that we have to turn it on its side. So this is where I kind of finished like so and so I'm gonna work my way across the top right here. So in order to do that I have to chain one and I have to single crochet the number of stitches that it tells you. In my case it was 59. So in this small swatch you have to have an odd number. So if you look at all the numbers that what it tells you to do to go across the top of this it was either 59, 65, 71, 79, 89 or 101. They're all odd numbers. That's what you need to look for. So in this case I'm just gonna say it's an odd number just because it's a small swatch but you can follow those dimensions that are provided in the pattern. So I'm just gonna make sure it is an odd number so I'm just gonna count. So one and I'm just going in the side of the, the stitch okay and two and three, four, five, six, seven and eight and I need an odd number so I'm just gonna go for nine. So you have to, sometimes you have to put in extra stitches in order to um, get it to the dimension that it's asking or the, the number of stitch counts or sometimes you have to skip over a section and just do it. I had to do it on mine because I got near to the end and I realized that I was, I was not gonna 
hit the end if I kept going in the same increment. So I jumped over a little bit of extra. You really cannot tell. So you have to use your own creativity with that. So that is uh, row number one and now we're gonna repeat number rows two and three over and over until we get to the bottom of the armhole. So let's start on row number two. We're gonna start off by chaining a three. One, two and three and that counts as a double crochet. So the way that it's easier to do on this particular pattern it we have to then continue. So we have to go uh, one single crochet into the next one and the next one we have to do a double crochet and you continue to do that back and forth. So it's a double and now single and then double and single and you'll keep doing that all the way down to the end of the row. So in the end of the row as we approach it then we're just continuing along and we have to finish off with the double crochet right into the very end just like that. So we started off with a double and we finish off with the double on this side. You always have to do that. So let's turn our work and move on. So row number three is always gonna be the same. Chain up one. So because there was a double crochet down here, this next one above it will be always a single. So and you can see the difference between the two stitches uh, for yourself. One looks like it's more like a lot going on to it. The other one looks a lot more empty. So when it looks a lot more empty that's a single and when there's a lot more to it it's a double. So we started off here and we chained up one so we're gonna do a single crochet right into the top of the first double and so then we continue our, our trend. So the next one is gonna be a double and the next one is a single and a double and single and double and single and double and always the very last one on row number three will be a single into the turning chain. Just like that. So let's uh, just turn our work and repeat rows two and three one more time together. So we're gonna turn our work and so row number two we chained up one and uh, one, two and three. So they're gonna start off with the double. The next one is gonna be a single. Okay, so it's gonna be double and single and double and single and double and single and row number two will always finish off with a double. Just like that. Now let's turn our work again and go for row number three. So turning our work we chain up one because there's a double already in the one below. This one has to be a single and then the next one is then a double. So you see that they're kind of shifting in between each other uh, to make this really kind of a compressed looking stitch but also giving texture at the same time. So I've actually gotten used to doing um, this pattern as far as like switching between single and double without a lot of thought to it. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to I'm not gonna deny that um, but once you get it into your head it actually works out pretty good. So now what I need you to do on the pattern is that you need to keep repeating this until you get to a certain height which includes the bottom edge here. Okay, so it says you need to continue this pattern now and in the extra small size it was 15 inches. So it's 15 right from this bottom edge all the way to the bottom of the armhole where we're gonna start that. And I'm gonna have you continue to do that um, until you get to that dimension. Now the other sizes are there including the child size of what that dimension is and if you're ever confused go and look at the diagram that is on the back page and that will show you the dimension as well that you need to get to. So in the next part of this tutorial I want you to do uh, this panel all the way from the ribbing to this to the dimension of the height for both of the panels because they're both identical and now I'm gonna show you how to shape the armholes which you'll have to do on both and then I'm going to take you then through the remaining of the back and then we're gonna move to the front of the panel. So at this time your panel should be done all the way to the bottom of the armhole. In my case it was 15 inches from here all the way to up here. And so now I'm ready to go and I did both of the panels exactly identical, laid them over top of each other so I know that they're exactly the same size and I also counted the, the amount of rows to make sense of it. So now we're gonna start shaping the armholes in order to make this work and what we have to do then is that we have to fasten off the other yarn. I hadn't done that yet. I wanted to wait to show you. So once you get to the bottom of the armhole we're gonna then finish off this yarn and we're going to fasten it off and we're gonna restart on this project but keep in mind that you need to look for other things that are involved. So let's uh, begin to do that. 
So just snip your scissors and just fasten off and you can use a darning needle if you wish in order to hide that in and I would probably highly recommend it anyway because you're gonna be wearing it if you are not somebody else maybe and just use a darning needle and just lightly glide it through the top of the stitch area like so. I almost stabbed myself there. It's good to have a really sharp darning needle except for if it's gonna go into your finger. <laughs> Not a good idea. Okay, so go back and forth three times just like so and now that will never fall out on you and I never impeded with the edge so it looks the same. I wanna do that with both of the panels as well. So. Now both panels it's now secured into position and now I'm just going to put that one aside and I'll work on that one later and then I'm gonna move on to the next one. So let's begin to do the armhole. I'm gonna start off with a slip knot on my hook first. Just put it aside and let's talk about the instructions. So if you notice in the pattern it looks like there's a jet in and there is truly a jet in from the outside. So we're not gonna start, we fastened off so that we don't start on an edge that we're already coming with someone in and when you go to do the arm band that comes around it'll be sitting into this position here. So it says skip the first four and you'll notice that there's other dimensions there for the other sizes and so I just gonna look at it. So I'm gonna go one, two, three and four. So I go to the fifth. I notice that it's a double crochet right underneath. So what I want to do is when I go to fasten on I want to just do what is opposite. So see how I've, st I've stopped here. So when I was finished off I was here okay and I turned it. So this is continuing then on the other side so that I don't mess up the pattern in any way. So you have to just keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna join it here and what I want to do is that I want to chain one and one single crochet into the first. Now it says for me for the back end here is that I have to um, continue the pattern across. So I'm going this single, double, single, double and I need to count out a total of 50 stitches that I need to do. So I'm gonna have to do that all the way across. You'll see that there's other dimensions for the other sizes. So just continuing to carry along as you normally did but because you're only doing 50 you're not gonna go right to the edge. Over here you're gonna stop earlier because that's what's gonna happen to, in order to keep it in balance on this side. So please do that and get over there and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I came up all the way to the other side and what I want you to notice is that I put a string in here. You have to leave four empty stitches at the end and when you counted over 50 you had four empty stitches anyway but I just put a strand in there just so that I would be uh, more confident in my own abilities. So what we're gonna do is in the next row is that we're gonna turn our work and we're going to do this um, just one time only for the front panel but for the back we have to do it a total of three. So right now what I want you to do is that we're gonna do some um, together work. So we're gonna make stitches decrease. So we're just gonna um, chain up one and we're gonna put the two first ones together. So we're just gonna go in and pull together. So in and then go to the next one, pull in like this. It's two together and then pull through all three loops. Now you continue the pattern as is. So there's a double here and I'm gonna go single. So what I want to do is that I want you to just go all the way back to the other side and at the very last two stitches I wanna put those together just like I just did and you're eliminating a stitch out to create a nice kind of indentation that is more fluent with your body. So I'll meet you on the other side. So when you get close to the end on the other side the last two stitches are gonna come together and you are gonna do the single tr uh, uh, crochet two together. So just going in and in and pull through and that just became together. So for this particular back panel here I have to repeat that row again three more times for the extra small and then you see that there's other um, repeats then for the other sizes so um, you can follow that on the, on the instructions. So to do this again then if we're doing a repeat is that you start up and you just chain up one and going into the first one and the next one put them together and then just look for what's in the next stitch. So this is a single underneath. I can tell that and I'm gonna just go across in the same pattern and then the last two would then become two together. Please repeat this row the number of times that it says on the pattern and I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So now I have repeated that decreasing row a total of an extra three times as per the pattern. You will have, if you're doing other sizes, you'll have other repeats. So you see that it kind of rounds up here and now we need to go to a certain height now. So for my size, I need to go from eight inches now from the bottom of here to the top of this. So all I'm just gonna do now is just go back and forth continuing the same pattern uh, just like we had before so it keeps it nice and consistent and when I get to eight inches here then I'm gonna stop but I'm not quite done the back panel. I still have a little bit of shoulder work to do which is not a deal breaker. It's actually quite easy to do and then all I just need you to do is just go back and forth just to go straight up to get to the size. So you're either gonna go eight inches, eight and a half, nine, nine, nine and a half or ten depending on the size that you're working on. I'll see you back here when I get that done. Okay, so now I'm back and I have my eight inches tall here. This is the bottom of the armhole here. It's obviously the same on the other side. So what I want to do now is to continue along and we still have to shape the shoulder on the back panel and we need to fasten this off first. The reason why we're fastening off, it's very similar to what we did over here. We need to jump and start at a different spot. So what I want to do then is just take my time, just weave in my ends and I wanna turn my project around and start again on this side. So I can trap in my stitch work uh, just by weaving these in but if you feel more comfortable, you can use a darning needle if you wish as well. So I need to get it over to a minimum of 10 stitches across and how do I know that? It says, uh, and this is 10 for my particular size that I'm working on here, is that we're gonna have to skip so many stitches and because we're skipping so many stitches, um, we, I may, ha I have to go in a little bit further um, so that I can trap that into position as well. So now I wanna turn this around and I wanna start the next section of this shoulder and then we'll move on. To do the next section, we actually have to do a total of two rows. So what we have to do is that we have to go across, fasten off, turn our work and then start again and at a different spot. So what we have to do here at the top is that I have to skip a total of six stitches and that's for all of the sizes. So one, two, three, four, five and six. Go to the seventh and that's where I want to join on my new yarn. Just gonna create a slip knot first and I'm gonna continue the pattern as usual. So right now where I've done, what I've done is that I've just joined on to where it shows as, let me take a quick look here. This is a double crochet where I am. So I'm just going to chain one and one single crochet into the same one and I'm gonna continue the same pattern across. So what I want to do on this side here is that I wanna stop six inches or sticks stitches short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count from the other side and stop and then fasten off. That's what I'm gonna do. Please do that same thing. So I'm now on the other side and I'm finishing. So that's it. So what I want to do then is that I wanna stop here and I wanna fasten off, weave in my end again and I want to start then the final row of the back. If you noticed on the diagram as I'm weaving this in, if you notice on the diagram you'll notice that it looks like that the top of the um, um, uh, vest was arching. It was, had a, like a curve to it. This is what this is looking at when you're looking at it from a from a greater perspective. So I'm just weaving these in, in and I want to turn my work again and I want to join on. So let's turn it and to join it once again is that the next row we have to skip the first five. So grabbing the same yarn in is that we just look at the stitches. So just one, two, three, four, five, skip the first five and join on your yarn again and follow the pattern as is and you want to go across until you leave five stitches unused on the other side. So right where I just did a join is a double crochet so chain up one and single into that one. So continue the pattern as is. It's important that you're able to identify your stitches. It really makes it a lot easier in your life. Okay and just continue along and when I get close to the other side I just kind of look and just count five back from the edge and that's where I'm gonna stop when I get over there. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm on the other side now. I left five empty on the other side. That's it. We're done the back panel. So I'm just gonna weave in my ends. I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide that in at the end of this and I'm just gonna leave it out. So at this time then you look like you have the arching look at the top. You have your armholes and it comes all the way down and um, it goes all the way then to the waist. 
So this is the back panel here and you can just shape it nicely if you want to. And now it's time to move on to the front panel. So the front panel we've already got it done up until the armholes and we're gonna carry on from this point here and then start and work on it from that perspective. So let's uh, get our next panel and let's begin. So I'm now moving to the front panel. So I had it stop right where that uh, dimension was. For me it was 15 inches and now we're ready to move on to shaping the armholes which is the same as what we did on the on the back panel. And then after we get that done then we then shift into a different mode in order to do the front. Let's say uh, I create a slip knot and you have to skip a certain amount of stitches. In my case it's four. So coming right up on the edge just look at it here. So go one, two, three and four and go to the fifth. Okay and I'm going right on top of a double crochet just so you know. And I'm just gonna attach it with a slip stitch. And we need to maintain the pattern going all the way across. Now this is your second time going through if you've been following the tutorial. So you should know that it's probably gonna be more simpler for you. I'm just gonna rejoin one more time. I'm just not satisfied. I just lost a couple plies when I was doing so. So just again so one, two, three, four and five right there. You know if you don't get things right the first time it's no need to panic just do your best. So chain up one because I'm going up on top of a double crochet and single crochet in and I wanna maintain the pattern. So what I wanna do is maintain the pattern like I did before and I wanna stop four inch or four stitches short. So I wanna come to the fifth stitch on the other side and again this is for my size. You have to look at the pattern in order to know how many to go across. So repeat that all the way across and then just stop when you have enough there. You can also count it across but it's just easier to look. So I've come to the other side and I have to leave four stitches unworked. So one, two, three and four. So now I'm going to start then the next row. So the next row just remember what we did before we did a decrease. So let's turn our work and we have to repeat this row a certain amount of times in my size that I'm doing I have to repeat it three more times after I've done this one. So we're gonna chain up uh, one here and we're gonna put the first two together. So just going in pull through and in, pull through and then pull them together just like that. And then look at the next stitch, it's a double crochet. So the first one is then single on top and maintain the pattern then going across. So single, double, single, double. And so when you get to the other side what you have to do is put the last two together and then you have to repeat this particular row a set number of times and in my case I have to repeat it three more times. So I see at the end of this row. So now that my work is turned I only have one row to do this time. So chaining up one and we're gonna put the first two together like we'd already had on the back panel. So just a, a single crochet two together and then just maintain the pattern as is. So the next one is a double so this one's a single. So you're just gonna go across this row now and this will be then the last time you decrease on this particular um, section because what's gonna happen now is we're gonna jump in the pattern now and fast forward to the front side instructions because if you continue down in the same uh, um, sentences that are directly below in the pattern you're gonna realize that you're doing the back panel. So just gotta look over to the right of the pattern. Look for those double asterisks it says front and then we're gonna start shaping this particular project. So just go across all the way so at the very final end of this row you're gonna put the final two together and then just hang on for me and I will show you what to do at that point. So when you get to the other side you gotta put the last two together as a single crochet and stop. So let's turn our work and what we're going to do then is just move it along in the pattern. I'm gonna probably just show you where we are in the pattern here and then we're just gonna move on and I'll show you how to do it because now we're just gonna start growing up one side only leaving the other side and we'll do that after. So right now in the pattern we just did this last row over here and that's it. So in the back we continued the last uh, that last row three more times and then we continued along and did this. But right now there's a double asterisk so now we go back over to here and then we start shaping the neck. So what's gonna happen here is that we're gonna start across. We haven't fastened off. We're not going to and then we're just gonna work the pattern a certain amount of stitches and keep going back and forth and we're gonna work our way up the neck. Let me show you that to you on the diagram. So let's begin to do the shaping of the neck and we're gonna start off with the left side first and what we're gonna do is we're going to create the shape that appears in the vest. So let me flip the page and show you exactly where you are. So right now we're actually right here at this point. And so now we're gonna continue and we're gonna stop and then we're gonna just start continuing to work up one side like this. 
Then when we get that done we're gonna immediately start here and go this way and then finish this side. So I want to show the instructions here because I did a little cheat sheet for myself. I actually had to film this three times already because I was kind of getting lost within myself on where to do. So I created a little cheat sheet for myself. So all the instructions are right here and we're gonna do some progressive decreasing and in order to get to the right shape. So let me show you my little cheat sheet that I made. Um, sometimes you gotta understand how you learn and how to, how you adjust. So here's my little cheat sheet here and what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be starting on right here and we're gonna go all the way to a certain amount and then we're gonna stop and then we're gonna build up and then come back. So you're gonna notice in the first three rows here we're doing a decrease right in the end like so. So this is the armhole continuing to open up on the other side and then it's gonna go straight up. The other side on the other hand every other row that we do we're going to do a decrease. So whenever we do a decrease the next row above it is going to just be one of uh, the same pattern going across. So I put dots in here because remember we are doing a pattern of single crochet, double crochet. I don't know what it is here and you have to make that judgment call when you're doing it and so I just did dots as a representation of each one of the stitches so I can maintain my counts. So the goal is then once we go up and do this every other row the goal is to get to number 11 here at the top. Once you get 11 you just go continuously straight up until you get to your inches high. In my case it has to be 8 inches in the armholes. So that's what we are looking for with this particular pattern. So what I'm gonna do start off in the bottom and so the other side of this diagram if you were to actually flip it upside down would be the other side of this. So let me see if you can actually see it through it. I have uh, instructions that I've done myself on the other side. Let's see if you can see through. No. <laughs> so this would be, be what it's like from the other side. So what I'm gonna do is that when I go to do the other side I'm just gonna visualize that I'm starting here and going this way and then just kind of read it backwards in order to get to the other side or you can just take a, a diagram. So you can take a screenshot at this time if you'd like to have this for yourself and then you can just print it out for yourself and this here is the left side. So as we begin to do the first row and being able to shape it, so we've gone all the way straight across and now we're only gonna go to about the middle part. Okay, it's pretty close to it. And then the other side's gonna pick up from that point and go to the other side. So what we need to do is that we're gonna use in my particular size 24 stitches. You will notice that it said 22 here because there's two together right at the front and right at the back. So without further ado, let's uh, just start this here and what I need to do is that I need to chain up one first and then the first two are gonna be come together. So just put those two together with the single crochet two together and now we have to maintain the pattern then for 20 stitches. Okay, so the next one here I see it's a double crochet underneath so this one has to be a single. So I'm gonna count out in, um, I'm gonna count it out as in here. So I'm not gonna say if it's single or double because then I'll get confused. So I already have one done and this will be two and three. See my hands are automatically doing the work. This is four, five, this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So there's 20 stitches across. Now the next two are gonna be come together so that's gonna be single crochet two together. So all together then when I look at this for the chain count there should be a total of 22. So the first two just became together as one so that's one plus 20 plus then these two just became one and that gives you then 22. So one plus 20 plus one equals 22. Let's move up to in the next row. So right now this is the neck area. It's the middle of the project and this is the armhole side. So if you're looking at my diagram that hopefully it makes sense. So the first time that we go up then this is row number two. We're gonna just chain up one and we are just going to match what is in there. Okay, so what we have to do here this time because there's single crochet in the one below this time you have to chain up three. So you have to look at my diagram not from a technical point of view of those single crochets on the edge. You have to maintain that pattern. 
So the next one is going to be a single because it's a double right there. That's what gave me that indication. And I'm just gonna keep moving across and then the very final two are gonna be two together because we're still creating that nice ridging for those um, armholes that are in the ends of the product. And so we just have one more row to do after this for that decrease on the armholes and then we're gonna just head straight up on that side and so it makes it quite easier to follow. So I'm really not, I'm not counting because I'm not and I'm just looking for the final two. I'm confident in my stitch work that I've got the right counts. I am going to show you how to cheat the system in the uh, event that your pattern or your panel is not the right width of stitches. I'm gonna show you how to cheat that if you have to as well. So then I'm coming right to the edge very shortly here and I'm looking for my two together. Okay, so here two two is that two two that. Okay, these two are together. Just reviewing how those are and then that becomes that. So I'm gonna turn one more time and when we start this row the first two are together once again and this is the final time on the armhole that it's gonna be like that. So chain up one and the first two are together. And then when I come all the way across then because this is row number three the final one on this side are gonna be two together as well. So I'm looking for the stitch work underneath so this one must be a single this time and then double. So I think for this part of the pattern you really gotta understand it um, in order to follow along. You gotta learn how to cheat the system if you have to. Uh, there really is no need to do that anyway but um, it's one of those items that sometimes you really gotta just pay attention. It's not always easy to sit there here and teach how to do every little thing. Um, you have to use some of your mind power as well to make decisions that make sense for, your, for you because you may be doing something slightly different or you may have a different point of view as well. Either way it's good to go. So I'm just looking for the final two on this side and I'm looking so two da, 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 da. so these two are gonna be together so I gotta go one more and put those two together. So what I need to do is here on row number three there should be a total of 19 stitches. So I'm gonna wanna be fussy in counting that out. So I've got one, two, th 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. So if there wasn't 19 I'd be very concerned right now. So what I need you to do now for the remainder of that and remember I showed you my sheet is that we have to repeat the pattern of going up without any decreasing. So it's just chain up one and follow the pattern and if it's a single crochet or double crochet in the next one you have to make that judgment call for the pattern and then the next row up is that you're gonna always decrease in the neck. So just think about it from this perspective. Okay, so here's the edge like so. You're never gonna decrease on this side and all the decreases is every other row and it happens in the neck area. I'm gonna ask you to do the remainder on your own uh, for this and what you're gonna do is that you're gonna follow that to the repeat pattern that it tells you and then once you have the repeat pattern then satisfied you have to continue to go back and forth until you get to the height and in my case it's 18. Let me show you back on the sheet one more time before I let you go. You can do this. So I'm back here on my cheat sheet. I just checked off the ones that I've done so far. So the next row I'm just gonna chain up one and I'm or, or it could be three depending on the pattern in this case. It depends on this next one that you have to worry about the pattern. So you just gotta follow it across and just go right to the end. And when you come back to the neck you're going to do the last together, uh, two together. So the goal is to start to reduce stitches. So every two rows it's gonna get less and less and your goal if you're doing my size of the extra small is to get to 11. It tells you that in the pattern and where you're looking for. So if you're doing a much bigger design chances are this is gonna be a lot more tapered and it's gonna take you more of a while but of course it's bigger so you have to compensate for that as well. So what I'm gonna do then is that I'm gonna satisfy this now until I get to the top of 11 I'm gonna take a measurement see if it's eight inches then from the armhole and if it's not I'm just going to continue to go back and forth regularly without any de more decreases till I get to my eight inches. My guess is I'm gonna get pretty close to the top without any issues at all. So I'll see you back here in just a moment. 
So here's what I got. I followed my chart. You can see I went flat up this side and I tapered in on this side to give the V neck and now it's time to fill in the other side of this. So what we need to do is that we need to start off in the middle and go this way. Never come from the outside when you're doing the second. If you start on this side what's gonna happen is that the one row is gonna appear upside down and instead of a seamless thing because it looks like it's the same yarn that travels up and if you do and start on this side what's gonna happen is you're gonna see an imperfection line right here and you will clearly see it. So even though the rest of it would look perfect you'll have an unsightly line. I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system just in case your stitch counts are off here and let me show you what to do. So if you remember my other chart and let me just pull that up and show you here as I'm doing it here and you remember my other chart we had here a total of 22 stitches that across. Remember that the first two came together on both sides so that it gives you a total of 24. So what we have to do is that we have to look for 24 stitches to be available on this side here in order to work. So it technically says skip one and then start over but what happens if you're off? Meaning that maybe that's not the true center of it and my first uh, outtake I had I think three or four outtakes on this thing is that my one um, side appeared to be really far off and the other side was just right here and I had a really unsightly thing. There's no way you can do it. So what you have to do here in my stitch count should be right anyway but if you're not just what you have to do is look for 24 stitches. So coming from the outside just count them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 and 24. So 24 is where I'm gonna start right here. So something happened in this particular project where it said to skip one stitch. Okay, so I've gone all the way over to here and I'm one off. Do you see that? You had to skip one and go to the second one over but I'm one off. So instead of trusting in that and then having one that appears to be um, not going down the center you're better off to count from the outside and go the other way. So what I want to do is that I want to just place a stitch marker here so that I know this is where I'm gonna start. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna look at my diagram once again and then show you what you need to do. So what I need to do, this is the diagram for this side. So technically this is backwards to the other side but I'm not gonna redo a whole new chart for that because I don't need to. So what I have to do here is you see that I, I have chains that are going up the side here. Do you see that? Well they have to because it's opposite I need to make sure that I'm doing opposite this time around. So instead of starting over here and finishing off in the neck I'm starting in the neck and going outward. So whenever I have to do it. So now I have to follow this chart this way instead of this way. Okay so I'll go like this instead. So this just means that these chaining up here will not make sense for the second side but you know what I'm experienced crocheter and chances are you will be too. This is an intermediate pattern or is it an easy one? I can't remember. Uh, it says it's easy. <laughs> Okay, so you just have to watch this uh, stuff. I don't even know why I'm laughing at that. It's kind of funny though um, because this is kind of complicated even for me and take number four. So I have to just go back and forth opposite to what I'm seeing here but if you just follow it in the opposite direction you're gonna be successful. So let's start you off anyway and let's get you going. So let's start you off right where I marked it and let's begin. So right where I have it marked is where I'm gonna start off with the slip stitch. Okay and just grab my yarn. I just create a slip knot to begin and I'm gonna pull that through and slip it to the yarn that is going to the ball. So, so I chained up one and now the first two become together. So just going into the first one okay then going into the next one and put those two together just like that. So now I'm looking at the pattern. The pattern underneath is a double so this means, must mean it's single. So that's my pattern repeat then going all the way to the other side. So but before I finish the other side I want to make sure that the final two come together in the sense that um, they're gonna put two together at the other side. So in the first three rows like we did before is that the armhole is still growing to be a little bit bigger and uh, so we have to continue that on this other side in order to keep this in balance. So let me just work my way across. You see that I'm bearing in my loose end as I go. Therefore I'll never have to cut that out. It's just buried for life and you won't even see it too because that's the same color. So it's continuing along and my trick is to make sure that I'm counting stitches in this uh, particular area of it. If any one pattern that you're gonna need to count stitches is directly in these um, these vest up kind of sections like that. 
because if you're wrong by any stretch, you know, I used to do these socks when I was uh, much younger crocheter and I could never get two pairs of socks to be the same because I was refusing to count because I thought I was just kind of perfect. You know how you are when you're 20? <laughs> so you think that uh, everything is gonna work out and then you get there and then realize you got two socks, different size. Welcome to my life. So we're gonna just go right to the end. So the last two stitches will be two together as you do that. So what I need to do to verify that I've done that, let me just put these together, is that there should only be 22 stitches going across. So let's look. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So I'm gonna turn my work. So the next row up is that we're gonna um, just continue following that pattern. So this is the armhole size. And if you looked at uh, the um, the pattern, you'll notice that the first two are together once again. So chaining up one and the first two are together like so. But on this one here as you hit the neck area is that it's going to not have a decrease on this side. So you're gonna follow the pattern as is. Remember you're just reading the chart backwards. I know you can do it. That sheet really saved me on this one. Um, I got really far in this uh, tutorial and just the words kind of uh, hung me up a little bit. Not saying the pattern was misdesigned. It's sometimes hard to visualize some of these things. It's a garment, it's a piece of clothing. You cannot really go too wrong on it or you can't really fake it too much before you end up having some serious trouble. So I'm gonna come all the way to the neckline. And so according to the instructions there will be 21 stitches left over. And I am going to verify that count before I continue. Um, I actually counted all the way up last time I was doing the other one all the way to the top of the neck. Okay, so I'm coming right to the end. And there's only one stitch in there, remember two became one. So there should technically only be 21 stitches, this one here. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And now let's go and turn it one more time. This is the last time I'm gonna show you. Okay, on the third row up, we're going to decrease again. It's the last time you're gonna decrease on the armhole side. And then the rest of it is gonna taper up and I'll show you that on the sheet as well. So this is uh, row number three, you're gonna chain up. And, and anyway, so you're gonna chain up one, put the first two together. Okay, and that's what it says to do in row number three. And then you're following the pattern across. You know, I really thought I was gonna have trouble with just remembering to single double, but it's just coming so naturally. I'm scared actually next time I do a double crochet project, I'm gonna do single double automatically just because I've gotten used to, to doing that. So in row number three, the armhole is gonna be come together. And it will be the last time in the armhole that everything is going to decrease. So you're gonna keep it all going straight up at this time for the remaining of the armhole. So that according to my sheet then there should be 19 stitches left by the time I'm done. So the armhole there should be two together. So the last two stitches one and two. looking for that. So this is one and this is two. So these two are together. So this time around there should only be 19. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And you know what? I think I'm off one. So this is why you're counting. Sometimes it's visually hard to see. So I got to go one more and then there you go. Got it. So don't be afraid to count. We all can screw up at that point. So we're gonna turn our work and I'm gonna bring back the diagram and I'm gonna show you what to do next. So now I'm gonna finish the other side that goes up. So on the armhole side it's gonna go straight up now and this side is gonna taper out and open to the v-neck and we have just completed number three. So now every other row is going to do a decrease 
when you come, when you um, do this row. So anytime you are, are working on this, you have to do your decreases in order to make this work. So when we did this now is that when we're on number three. So what we're gonna come across, remember everything we're doing is opposite. So I just put two together. So number four is going to go across and it's just gonna be one into each just following the pattern and then when you come back into the neck area you want to do that. But the problem here is that because it's opposite you're actually going to be starting off in the neck area. So you gotta just watch where you're going. Sometimes you might have to do a decrease when you start at the row and just uh, watch for that and then you're just gonna continue to maintain the pattern then going straight up. This is one of those things you gotta know how to read patterns for this one. Um, hopefully this will help you and I know people are gonna leave comments right now saying I'm really confused. Just gotta remember that it is opposite. So um, these here are on the opposite side. So when you go to start this side here, you may have to put the two together and then go across instead of doing it at the end. That's kind of what I'm saying. So I'm gonna leave the rest for you to go straight up then on the one side, taper in on the other and then I'll meet you in at the top and you're gonna go for the amount of stitches. For myself when I got to the 11 on the this round here number 15 I was actually at my 8 inch mark so I stopped there. So as soon as I got to 11 stitches across to keep it in balance to the pattern it satisfied that it was 8 inches as per the uh, dimensions that I needed and that's what worked for me. So continue to do that the rest on your own and I'll see you back here in just a moment. I have just a quick tip for you. If you look at this, if you fold your project in half, just at the halfway point and you can follow it up, you can tell if you're going wrong is if they don't match each other. Okay, so they're matching are uh, pretty close at this point. Well, they are close because they're the same. So if something is going really weird and you're coming up like this and it's coming off really weird, you know something is wrong. So don't be afraid to test it like that in order to find balance within this project. So now I'm finished doing the tops here. So I have my beautiful v-neck in here and you see how I improvise by one stitch. It really doesn't make a difference. You can fold it in half. It still stays equal and now the front panel is now com officially complete. So now what we're gonna do now is that we're going to just refer back to the instructions. We now have the front and the back done and so if I place this down now and let's just do that here really quickly on camera. So if I place the back panel down in and then I place the other one over top like so. This is what it will look like so far. So I still have to sew in the, the sides and etc. and just have everything uh, completely match up. But you can see you have the back end that's filled in here and it's just a matter of putting things together. Let's go back to the instructions and see what's next. So now what we have to do is that we have to shape the top of these. So let's do the first one first. So the first one says and what we need to do is that we need to get the middle one here. This is where the neck is. We need to build it up a little bit taller here and on the other side that we need to build up it right in the here and then leave the other side. You remember how what we did in the back is that we kind of built it up like in sections. Do You see like it's stepping. We need to do the same thing but only one step here in in here. So what we have to do, let's start off with the first one here and we need to see, see this is where I finished off so this is I know that I need to go this way. The other side same thing so I need to go this way and if you go the other way for example you, it's gonna appear backwards and upside down. So what we have to do is that we have to fasten on some new yarn and let's get our uh, stitch work ready. And let's get our hook and what I need you to do is that I need you to skip over to the sixth stitch or skip six stitches go to the seventh. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. This is a single crochet. I can see that so I'm gonna attach it and I'm gonna chain up three. So you're gonna maintain the pattern as is. So chain up three, one, two and three. Just let this straggler just fall on top and then you're gonna bury it and you're just gonna go across the rest of it all the way to the neckline with just following the pattern. So single, double, single, double. That's it. You get that. So just coming out and then the very end. In this case will be a double because I'm following the pattern as is. Just like that. Okay so now I have a little mini step up here and this will make a difference in the end. So you just gotta trust in it and now I'm gonna fasten that off. And before I go too far I'm just gonna just lock it in a position. I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide that in. I'm gonna come to the other side. So the other side the neck has to be bigger here. So where it's coming up the neck. So what we have to do is that we have to then start on that side. 
just like that. Okay. And so what I would recommend is that you can either count the stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is what I did on this side here. So if you can just start on the edge corner here and just follow it as is. So the first one is going to be a single crochet in. I can see that. So just join it with a slip stitch. Chain one, one single into the first. And then I'm just gonna maintain the pattern for just seven stitches. So that's one of seven. So this will be a double crochet for two, and then three, four, five, six, and seven. Like that. Okay? So now you have like the matching on both sides uh, for these kind of items like that. So you just kind of uh, make sure that you match everything in order to keep it consistent. So now I'm just gonna fasten off and I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide those ends in better. So that's what we have for there. So let's move along in this pattern and see what else we have to do next. So what I'm gonna have you do now is that I'm gonna have you sew your sides together. Make sure the right sides are, are facing inward so that your sewing appears on the inside of this so when you're wearing it you don't see any sewing. When we go to do the neckline for example what we're gonna do is turn this uh, outside right and then we're gonna be doing it from that perspective so it doesn't appear upside down. So I want you to sew along the sides here. I want you to sew along the top here. Okay, do both sides just like that and then do the other side. Do not sew obviously in the armholes at all. So and you don't have to sew along the bottom of course. So use a whip stitching technique in order to do it. And now your sides should be completely identical to each other. So just grabbing a spare piece of yarn that you have matches the same color. And what you want to do is do a, a whip stitch. So let me quickly show you how to do that. I like to use a slip knot on the edge of my whip stitch strand and I'm gonna grab a piece of yarn. Here and my darning needle I'll just feed it through. So all I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start off in the bottom. I can start up here if I wanted to. It wouldn't really matter. But what I wanna do is that I wanna take the outsides. I marked what side was the right side when I was doing this project here so I know which is the right side. And I want to just push it through both and I wanna match exactly what I have. So I'm gonna put the needle through the, uh, the loophole and pull everything nice and tight. Okay, and now all I'm just gonna do is just work my way up the side of this outfit, taking my time, but don't over uh, pull. You just want it nice and snug without distorting any of the edging. So I'm gonna do this for all of the sides that we have for this that I need to do and then I'll meet you back here and we're gonna continue along in making this project. So now everything is sewn together. I'm still looking at the inside of this. So when I go to flip it uh, the other way so it's outside right, then I will do the neck. So you have to turn it so that you're actually looking like you're gonna wear it and then crochet around it because it just makes sense. So what I need you to do, I'm gonna go out of order in the pattern now and I have actually sewn all my seams together and I am going to put on my armbands. Now these were chaining of six and then a uh, second chain from the hook, just single crochet and then all the rest of the rows are just, there's only five stitches back and forth in the back loop only. It's exactly the way that you did this. Okay, so it's exactly way. So I did mine 16 inches. It doesn't tell you how far to go because what you have to do is you have to make it work. So what I did is I did 60, 16 inches and I left a little yarn ball for myself just in case I wanna go in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm looking at the inside of this project. I'm going to sew here and I want to make sure that I don't create any um, extra pulling on it. So I left on extra here just in case I have to do more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start sewing this and making it look good and then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side and if I have to then crochet a bit of extra then I will and if there's if it's too long at that point then I can just pull out some so I haven't actually finished this off so I can adjust. So what I want to do use your whip stitching skills and just whip stitch it now to the outside of here and then along here along the base here you're gonna sew it together and then that'll create um, the look of it going seamlessly all the way around. 
So I have my armbands on now. I'm looking at the good side. So if I was wearing it, this is what I'm looking at and I'm gonna start here. Remember how I improvised right here? I was off by one stitch. I wanna be very conscious of that when I'm going to look at it here. So you're gonna see here when I go to look at it, you wanna get the middle one of this section here. Okay, and I'm going to mark it with this, uh, a stitch marker so I know where it is when I come to that particular point. So it says uh, in the instructions to work 22 stitches in my particular size down the edge here to the middle and then up here 22. Now you might have different stitches depending on what size and then you're just gonna work along the back. So you just have to, there's no stitch work really to go into the outside here. You have to make it work. So you have to start up in the right or up in the corner here. So let's just start here and let's just see how we're gonna do this. And so we're gonna go down. So go right where the seam is okay and just insert in. There's no stitches here so you have to make it work and you're just gonna single crochet. So let's just join it, chain one in one single crochet into that same spot. So that's one out of 22. So let's just uh, start just kinda eyeing it up and going down this side. So you're gonna go two and three. I haven't done this before so I'm gonna just put faith in it. This is four, four, that's five, and six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So let's see where I am here. So I've got ten in already and I still have to go all this way for another um, twelve stitches. I can only go twenty-two. So that looks about right so far. So I'm gonna keep on going. So I'm just gonna go. So eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And I still have a few more to go. So that was 17 and then 18 is in the next one. 19, 20, 21, I don't wanna put two stitches in there, 21 and 22. So there's 22 going down, okay? So it looks pretty good so far. So now that's the center point. I'm gonna skip over that center point and come on to the other side and I'm gonna work my way up. So that one happens to be in a stitch. So let's count 22 up to the next seam line up here. So I've already got one in there so far. So I'm gonna go two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I'm about halfway up, that's ten and eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 13, 14, 15, this is 16, 17, this is 18, 19, 20, and here's the seam line here, 21, and at the seam line, 22. So there you go. So there's 22 down and 22 back up. Now the back seam, all we're just gonna go is just along the back, just continue to go one single crochet into each one of the stitches across. In the back, you'll be able to see that. So I'm not gonna count those at this point. And so this is uh, basically the foundation to get this next started and then the rest of it's really quite easy as we do it and I'll get you onto that in just a moment. There's not too many rounds to do because if you do too many rounds you're gonna seal off the neck and then it'd be pointless for you to even wear this.
Okay, and now they get back around and then I'm just gonna continue and I'm just gonna get it close enough that I can get to that um, starting point and I'm gonna slip stitch it to the first single crochet. So let's now go up and let's do another round. So let's move our stitch marker once again. So we have three rounds, four rounds to do of the following I'm about to show you. I'm only gonna show it to you one time. So what you're gonna do is locate the center one of here and you're going to move your stitch marker to match. Okay, so there's the center right there and when you get down there you're going to put three stitches together and I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then the rest of it here you're just going to put one single crochet into each. So to start off you're going to chain up one and one single crochet into each going all the way down to those stitch marker and in the stitch marker you're gonna put three together so that the stitch marker is the middle one of the three and then you're just gonna single crochet around and to the back just like you have. So because you're not adding anything to the top of this meaning over here or down the sides of the lapel area you're not actually um, going to be uh, increasing stitches so therefore you'll speed up. So let's get down close to that center point. It's the only way to do this is because I was thinking to myself how is it gonna do that in order to keep that point nice and pointy at the base and it's all done in three together. So let's uh, show you how to do that. So I got three stitches that need to come together. So I got the next one, the one with the stitch marker and then the next one put those together. So you're gonna go in the first one Okay, making sure everything's nice and tight. So go into the first one, pull through, go into the next one with the stitch marker, pull through and go into the one after the stitch marker and pull through and then pull through all four loops and three just became one. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself back up and around. You're gonna stop and join it with a, um, a slip stitch and then you're gonna chain up one and come back down. But every time you come back down here you have to move the stitch marker. So I can do that right now. Okay, okay so I just have to remove that and next time I'm about to start I just mark the middle. So please do uh, after this round please do three more rounds of that and then we'll come back and just finally review the end of this video. So that's it for today. So today you learned how to do the ribbing for the base. You then learned how to do a panel both the front and the back and the front had that special just so that you could get around the neck. You then learned how to sew things together with the whip stitch. You learned how to do the armbands and that was the ribbing the same concept as the base here and then you learned how to create the v-neck here with, with what you have. So I taught you how to improvise a little bit just in case your stitches are off and both of the sides look absolutely amazing. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. This is the very first time I've ever done adult clothing like this and I'm actually pretty excited. I'm actually pretty motivated to maybe even move on to a sweater even for myself. So this is a men's size uh, sweater. This is extra small and this is it for today. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.